by GN and Co. Sure, gang, eh? welcome back to yet another episode of After School is After School with your girl, Sis G.U. To my returning listeners, I hope that you guys are well at home. And to those that are passing by, all right, I hope you like what you see. And you join the gang, eh, please. I hope you like what you see. And you join the gang, eh, please. I hope you watch you and you join the gang, eh, please. Okay, guys, today I am not alone. I am joined by these two beautiful ladies with me. We are shooting the second installment of the Tresemme Style Your Story series. And I'm going to get right into it. I'm going to introduce my lovely guests. Over here, we have Samgele CBC, who is the founder and owner of Indalo Nubian Naturals. She is a natural hairstylist a lock specialist, a makeup artist, a masterclass host as well. Her passion for hair started at the age of nine and she's known for her unconventional method and approach to the maintenance of natural hair. She has opened stores both in Johannesburg and Pretoria. Some of her achievements include being listed amongst Mail and Guardian's 200 South African young leaders in 2019 and making the Soatens unsung heroes list of 2023. My next guest Yes, Deborah Somwe is the owner of Han de Bote. She will say it first in case I said it, you know, incorrectly, <laughs> which she founded in her second year of varsity to help fund her tuition. The business started off as a passion project and has now become an established and trusted hair salon. From working in university residences to a mobile saloon and delivering hair service, now she has her own store which can accommodate her growth. Her background in science plays a huge role in the way that she tackles hair treatment. Her salon offers a full bouquet of hair styling services. Sma and Debbie. Hi. 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 How are you guys? Good. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm so excited to be talking to you today because I feel like anything that has to do with hair... It's coming your way. So be prepared. I have personal questions. I have Yo. questions on the half of Tressa May. We're going to answer all of them today. <laughs> but before getting into the questions, let's play a bit of an icebreaker. Okay. okay. I'm going to need you guys to show me two photos. Okay. <laughs> one is where you absolutely loved your hair. Okay. You knew you ate. And one is one that you're not so proud of. And then give me the story behind both. Where were you going? What okay. were you doing? Yeah. Um, okay, let me start. Okay. I have, I have, I don't know if you know, um, they used to call it bump. That Rihanna. No. That the Rihanna. Sides. Take a bow. Take a bow. <laughs> what, Sma? what, what? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> yes, they used to call it Rihanna razor cut something. Yes. Yes, that's like my worst. Your worst hairstyle. Hairstyle. And, and when was this? This was back in 2014, oh, 2015. perfect. Such a long time ago. Yes. You didn't know better. 2013, it's fine. 2013, 2014, okay. yes. Okay. And my best hairstyle has to be my locks. Yes. Has to be my locks. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so for between 2011 and 20. 18. Mm. I was haircuts, color, mm -hmm. afro, regrow, treat, hair color, mm -hmm. cuts, until I decided, you know what, I'm done. Yes. I'm done with coloring my hair. I'm done playing around. Mm -hmm. I'm okay. Right. And I, I think that's when I got my name, uh, my nickname, Smarty Miss Hair. Mm. And I was like, okay, now it's time to settle down. Okay. Same from Shada, man. Same from my desk, man. Yes. You know? <laughs> and I'm a looks kind of felt like a perfect hair style. For that. Or a trainee. Uh -huh. To groom it up. Okay. Because now I'm like, okay, I want to do other things. I'm yes. just so smarty. Well, everywhere and anyway. Now I have to go to hair talks. I have to mm. go to entrepreneur talks. Now I'm going to start looking more prof professional. I'm not saying that it wasn't professional, but... Just for where locks you gave are. me a different look. I get that. It gave me a different look. Okay. So, so for the looks. hairstyle you didn't like, yes. right? What is a styling tip you would apply today? Let's say you had to bring it back for yes. whatever reason. Yo. How <laughs> would you go about it this time to maybe make sure you like it? Now, let me tell you one. Yes. Lassen Zailoa Kona. Eh, NB. Sasi Serenkin. Oh, okay. One. So, <laughs> I would definitely visit a professional hair salon now yes. than before. Two, the technique that was used uh -huh. um, to put on the hairstyle. Yeah. First, they glue on to your skin. 
<laughs> and I remember three days after putting it on, I struggled with turning my head around. Yes. And I could remove the front. Because mm. the paper, they would put on like a paper like thing. Yes. Put on the glue, put on um, a, a cap, and then put on the, the, the weaving. Okay. So when you take it off, it looked like a hat. Like oh. you could definitely put it on again. But the problem is that it was stuck on my, on the back of my hair, my mm-hmm. back hairline. And I ended up having to cut the back of my hairline and eventually have to have a haircut. Of course. Because of that. Of so course. definitely a proper salon, a proper stylist, someone yes. who's well equipped on what they were doing. Okay. Definitely. Okay. Yes. You know, it wasn't that bad though. I will say I've seen some worse. <laughs> <laughs> but what's important is that you saved the day now with the locks. Yes. And Debbie, Miss Buzz Down, give me one photo where you were just like, I have no idea what's happening with my hair. Yeah, it was Nicki Minaj. I remember when Nicki yes. Minaj had the bangs. Yeah, so Nicki Minaj had the bangs. We just started making wigs. Okay. Um, and clothes just weren't so popular. So oh, I made a wig oh, with the God. bangs. Hence why it looks like a helmet a little bit. Yes. Um. So it's the first, no, no, no. I think it's the second wig I've ever made. The first wig I made was with a closure. And then I thought, oh, let me make one without the closures. Because we just didn't understand it back then. Yes. And Nicki Minaj was trending with her. Her bangs. Bangs. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So I made the wig. As you can see, there's color on one side. So when mm-hmm. I was coloring it, I didn't <laughs> put it on a mannequin. I just held the wig. And, you... and then I put bleach Oh. Now, when I rinsed it off, there was just color on like one side, one side, side of the and wig. not the other. <laughs> you know what? It's not that bad either. Back then, the, the, like the thing with my hair always like, I've never had a moment like now where I hate my hair. But later on, you're like, what the hell? Was I <laughs> thinking? What are we doing? Yes. You know? Because back then, people were like, oh my gosh, I like your hair. Can you do a similar color? Oh my gosh, the bag. The bag. My... Those bags, wow. Uh, no, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure. Okay, so now show us a photo where you absolutely loved your hair. Yo, guys, I always love my hair. Yes, <laughs> that's how it should be. <laughs> Like even round, this is this is the photo. This is a good like, head day. This, this okay. This is the photo I'm busting down. Yes, it's water. moving. It's shiny. But a photo that you know, I always go back to is um this. Let me just show you guys the style. It's not a photo, it's a video. Yes. No, that's fine. fine. So here I had done my hair in <gasps> Cape Town. Yes. And you know, I colored this wig quickly. I had yes. curls. It had it was giving it's volume. Giving, it's giving side. It parts. was laid. I was just like, oh. Like I always go back to this hair and like, wow. Like I did it. I was actually <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and where is hmm. the lace? There's no lace. There it's no laid. Lace. And generally I don't wear frontals because you know, just because I'm so busy, I try to like just do the five by fives. Yes. But I had a frontal hair. It was bouncy. It was oh, it was in giving. curls. It was like I enjoyed this hair. Again, I feel like yeah. we're seeing progression from your last hairstyle. And the color yes. Hair, right? Yes. And now you can see it's more it's even. It's even not on one side. Yeah. Like yeah. Okay, so let's say you were to bring the bangs back <laughs> ne, for <Yeah>. a season. <laughs> um now obviously knowing what you know with hair, knowing how to go about things a little bit better, what would you do to that hairstyle to make sure that it's it comes out the way that you want? to two. definitely i think right now what i would do to the bangs is one it wouldn't be so full okay uh, the recent bangs that i've cut I actually used the closure so it's oh. more natural on the top it's not as full you have your bangs and also shape it to my head Nicki minaj could do that <laughs> the straight the blunt yes. chinese look but you know you always have to put in in mind what you look like you know mm. the shape of your features what you want to show we cannot like here's not a one size fits all yes. so we're not all going to have one hair style it looks perfect on all of us it can look mm. perfect on you mm. and not necessarily on me and I have to put my personal touch in it on it yeah to yeah. give it that little thing okay Definitely. both of you started your journeys relatively young um, when it comes to hair so I want to know how has it been running a successful saloon who oh. Uh, so for me, I had my first paying customer at the age of 10. Wow. Smart. Yes. <laughs> With 10 rand, then I gave my grand five rand and I took the five rand. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, I had my first paying customer at the age of 10. Yes. And I think that's when I decided that this wasn't just a hobby. Mm-hmm. It was actually passion. It was mm-hmm. actually talent. Mm-hmm. And with passion and talent, that's what had kept me going so far. Mm. Um, after high school, uh, we didn't have funds for me to feather my stylist. Okay. And fortunate enough, one of the salon owners spotted my cousin. Mm-hmm. And then he asked him, who does your Where locks? Where did you do your hair? 
And he was like, no, I have a sister at home. And I plus, she's not doing nothing. Mm. And they were like, no, come through for a training. And then after, we'll place you at work. And a week training turned into a two-day training. Okay. And then they refunded me half of the money. They said, you are teaching us how to do hair. Wow. Yes. Instead of the other, other way, way around. around. So, mm. you know what? Mm. So, I carried that passion and, and drive and that talent that actually I can turn something out of this Into and business. it has been that so far even mm. with people that i meet people that i employ i always tell them i'm not here to keep you inside the salon mm. you are here to learn to grow to grow yourself so that one day if you have to run something out there you actually run it with proper skills mm. so it hasn't been smooth it hasn't mm. been smooth there's this one um episode scene that i remember mm. that always always just comes me, you know. Mm. Um, one of my ex-employees walked in and he had a sick note. And the sick note was written heart failure. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Heart failure. Wow. The sick note was written heart failure with possible fever. And I was like, so the fever they saw, it was possible. Yes. But your heart failed. <laughs> and at that time, so when I opened my first salon, I was 25. But mm. when I joined the hair industry, I was 20. Okay. So at eight, at age 25, I'm opening a salon, mm. a, a proper salon. I don't have a proper structure on how I'm going to conduct people. Because yes. now myself, this is the first You're time learning. I'm running something. Mm. Now we have to go pay the signal to pay the failure. And it was if you lay this in December. And I'm like, so you wanted to take time off from work. Why didn't you say? Yes. And, and I be said, honest and I said about to him, it. it's fine. Let me walk you out so that when you die, you Feeling a pain, <laughs> so that it doesn't happen no, whilst you're at work. That's one of the highlights with yes. guys when you run a business, you're going to encounter mm. all of these things, mm. but they don't definite, they don't define who you are. Mm. Your talent, your passion, your dedication will definitely top it all. Mm. It will still push you to overstep ahead. Yeah. So it's it's not smooth, but it's definitely worth it. Yes, definitely. definitely worth and yourself, Debbie, how have you found this journey? Um, you know, most of the time that we think that the journey or the business starts the day that all the formalities are done, mm -hmm. the day that you just, you sit down and you say, this is the business, this is the name, etc. But when I look back and I look back at my life, I realized like my whole life has been the journey leading up to this, you know. Mm. Um, in high school, I was on the... Is it playground? What do they call it? The fields. Yes, the fields. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. During lunch break, I'll do styles on my friends. You know when those when we used to have those humps, Jersey yes. Shore, Jersey Shore, and then you the back. Yes, and yes. then you have the cornrows on the side. So I'll yes. do the cornrows on my friends' pin, and everyone was rocking that hair yes. back then. You know, I started then in high school, and everyone just knew like Deborah's the girl to go to. And then you, we, we, I started learning. I had a friend who was also. Weaving, I'd weave her, she'd weave me because we couldn't afford to go to a salon. So okay. we do each other's hair. I started doing my own hair because hair was actually just a nightmare to do. I have a lot of thick, like hair. I've got a thick afro, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So it's very difficult to just go to a salon. They'll just hurt you. So I was also just doing my hair at home. People trusted me. I was the girl to go to. Um, That even in varsity, you know, that name carried on. Whilst mm -hmm. I was in varsity, I was still, I was weaving people in their res rooms, um, or in the students' accommodations, mm -hmm. you know, just to get um my funding going. Um, and I remember in 2012, like weaves were, weren't like that I popular. Think. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So in 2012, I bought my first weave. It was a curly weave. I dyed it blonde and yo, oh. the whole <laughs> of it lost their minds. Each time I would walk through those stairs, it's just like, girl, where did you get your hair? What hair is this? Yeah. You know? So that's how I started selling hair. And then my clientele was growing that way. Um, you know, and after I finished varsity, I just carried on selling hair. I searched for, I think also the background because I was studying a bachelor's of sciences really helped me in terms of research. So I, mm. I researched, I found mm. uh, suppliers, I tested them out while still using my trusted lady, mm -hmm. you know, and we just evolved like that and it grew. So I just feel like the whole thing, you know, has mm. always been the journey until I started uh, doing house calls. And when house calls weren't feasible, like I can't travel, that one hour of traveling yeah. takes, takes a lot, a lot from of me. Yeah. Mm. So then I started doing it at home, but then at home it just got so hectic. Like, <laughs> why do I have so many people at my In house? house? Yeah. And then also like boundaries because the person will be like, yo, I'm outside. It's 10 p.m., girl. I'm trying to sleep. But no, Debra, I've got this tomorrow and it's so urgent because you... you it's people you've been servicing for such for a, a long, long time. time. And also how the business started. It was friends. Now it's friends, 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 mm. friends, friends, friends. So, you know, it's, 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 it was quite difficult working from home until um, 
we then opened the salon. Okay. Um, and even like how the salon is structured, you know, it's it's. I wanted to keep that. I'm going to my girl's home to yes. do my hair, mm, so I didn't want it to be home. too big. Yeah, just more professional with uh, you know, certain structures in place, mm-hmm. but to just keep it intimate that mm-hmm. there's four people that I'm able to pay attention to um, all the clients mm-hmm. and they can still feel like they're at home. Even when you come to the salon, you know, just the setup and everything, it's it's very homey. Yes. It's very, oh, can I have tea? Can I have this? Mm-hmm. You go to the bathroom, oh, there's pads because, you know, mistakes happen and there's For certain sure. things that happen. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think that was just my journey that led to here. And, I, and we're still going on, you know. Mm-hmm. I don't think I've, it's, I've it's arrived anywhere. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's not you know, ending. Sure. There's constant no. change and constant, there's, there's, yeah, there's always things that Something are happening. Yeah. I even feel like with the hair industry particularly we see year in and year out trends come yes. in they go and I feel like you guys are constantly having to, to evolve. almost evolve yes yeah. and learn these styles and learn because you spoke earlier about the fact that closures weren't that popular yes. at the time and obviously now it's something that you can probably do with your eyes closed <laughs> you know and I'm yeah. sure in that time you had to just practice and kind of gauge what's happening and so forth but I've heard both of you speak to the fact that you have a passion for hair yes. so obviously starting a business was very easy not easy but I mean at least your, your heart was in the right place yes. so whatever came it was worth it what is something you've not enjoyed what is something you look the least forward to when it comes to running your business hmm it's the hiring and the firing okay I don't like that part okay I, I see the expenses the salaries the payroll yes the firing and hiring because at the end of the day you are employing people that are going to lead your brand mm. deliver your brand to your mm. customers you're also handing over your existing customers to, to them, them and trusting them with mm. these people. So having to fire and hire figure house man, you face, okay. And then they get yes. used to them. And then the next thing it's more than firing and hiring. It's, how we take it for granted that our skills, our hand skills can take us somewhere. There's yes. people that are very skillful, mm. but because they know it's, it's my skill, it can never die. It's mm. there. It's with me. Therefore, you know, even if I don't pay attention to it, even if I don't invest in it, I can still have it tomorrow. Mm. But me as a salon owner, if I hire you, I see the potential. I'm, I'm willing to put my skill on you as well to say, run with it, you know, take care of my customers. Mm. So having to always say to customers, oh yeah, I had to let go of, of this them. person. And now we are hiring a new one. Mm. You know, it's, it's a lot. Mm. And also for me personally, it's, it's daunting on my mental health as well because you develop relationship with these people. Yes. You mentor them. Yes. You teach them. You are their mother, their father, their sister, their brother, you know? Yeah. And then now I must see you go. Also having to say, oh, Gugu, um, we can't happy. keep you anymore. Yeah. And those people that you see, they have potential. It's mm. just that their social norms, their social decisions, it's affecting. Mm. And you can see, good if you can just invest, we learned away now. If you took it seriously. <laughs> You'd be able to do so really more well. than anything. It's the firing and the hiring that's that's okay. that I don't look to, uh, look forward to. Forward to yes, yeah, which is fair. I feel like you spend a lot of time with the people you work with at that, and in a confined we spend space. most of our time together. Mm. Now that we have to let go of you, like okay, yeah, that must be tough. It's it's very tough. Mm. And for you, Debbie. So similar to what Smar said, um, I think like managing a team is the hardest part of our business. Um, being a hair salon, um, especially because the whole thing with Ryan is that it's you go into your girls, right? Mm. And they expect them to go to Debra's because mm. for the longest time it was just Debra doing Hello. their hair. Yes. yes. And now Debra has to hand over to someone else and I have yes. to hand them over to someone else to service them and that person needs to have the same care, the same attention to detail like I do. Mm. Um, and it becomes difficult because at the beginning, clients will just be like, oh, I can wait for you. And you're just like, I cannot do everyone's yes, hair. For sure. You know, and now my team needs to be an extension of me. They need to be a part of me. And I need a team that, you know, I can trust and I can work with. And it's it's quite difficult to get to that point. For sure. Um, you know, I've been blessed with like a great team, but just even now, constantly they know I'm always like how are you improving yes. how are you doing better than what you did yesterday like yes. I don't want you to be stagnant mm, and just oh because you did yeah you did great yesterday you're not going to do great tomorrow no yeah <laughs> like, you have to it needs Put to be continuous it needs to be constant yes um you know but it's always just helped in terms of me being an example to them right I don't tell them treat your clients clients nicely and i don't do that you know mm. if i say treat your clients with respect don't be late they know i'm not going to be late for my clients Lead i treat my example. clients with respect and i always ask them when my clients walk out 
How do they feel? Yes. Yeah, they're always so happy. That's exactly <laughs> what you want. How your clients must walk yes. out. Like, there must be no difference. And also because it's not a... Um, because most salons are like rented chairs where yeah. everyone rents a chair. So you, yes. the experience is different. When Very different. Google, Depending different. on who you go yes. to. Yes. <laughs> mm. I don't want that. Because mm. mm. then you, you, you tend up to... You, you tend to have a star uh, stylist and that puts you in a very compromising position because when that person leaves then what happens you know yes. so you know getting everyone on one level that yes. is it's, it's so much work you know yes. because we humans every day is not going to be the same mm. so I don't want Sma would have come yesterday and done her hair with A and then she comes today and be like, no. he's just broken up with her boyfriend <laughs> so she's going through it and now she's not trying to do your hair the way A did your hair yes. yesterday so like that consistency and just having your team to be consistent and having to constantly push them There's a, there was a time I was having meetings every week Every week in the morning, we're having meetings. I'm going through all the house rules. Yes. I'm going through how to take care of your clients, how to yeah, look after your sure. clients every week, I think for like six months. And even now when I see, because I've had the same team for a while, when I see they're slacking, I'm just like meeting. They they're know. Meetings. When I saw <laughs> meeting, they know somebody did something. Yeah. Because I'm just like, I, I, and I don't like talking to just Google, One right? person. Google does something. I'm like, oh, Google, don't do that again. It's no, everybody. Google did something. Everybody Let's sits down. I don't want to now also have to tell Sma and have to tell Debbie no. I get it. Google's done this. Listen, guys, everyone, even if you were thinking of doing it, even if don't you're going to do it, don't do it. Yes. Like, let's just end here. The yeah. This thing that I did, I remember there was a time where I just wanted everyone to feel important. I wanted yes. them to understand walking in my shoes felt like. Mm -hmm. I said to them, for the next coming, I think it was four weeks. We're going to have meetings every week and everyone's going to dress up like a CEO. Yes. I'm telling you. Yebo. They were walking in heels inside. The and I could feel even in their faces, like they felt like they're important. Yes. Like, oh, smart. I think we can change one, two, three, four. And mm -hmm. I'm like, hmm. Yeah. And then after that four week, and then we did a review. I'm like, how did it feel to mm. actually walk in my shoes? I'm like, we didn't understand it before, mm. but now we are getting yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. Because sometimes you will tell some someone one thing for 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 a long time, and I'm like, if you become the CEO, let's see how you're going to handle it. Yes. So it it yeah. it, it really helps. No, that's yeah. very important because even with my team, you know, sometimes you try to explain to people this is the experience I want my client to have, yes. but they've never experienced it themselves. So yes. I got to a point where it's like, okay, I'm booking you at a salon. Yes. Where like even if it's like you know like how nail salons or like hotels mm -hmm. are, they're a bit like. Let me book you there so that you can see how people treat you like a queen. Because yes. I don't know how to explain to you. This is how you must treat yes. um, the client. But what Sma also said in terms of the CEO, um, you know, and making your your your, your stylists or your employees feel important. Mm -hmm. I think once your employees understand and they walk in your shoes and they understand your vision, um, someone once told me that the meaning of division just means there's two visions, right? For there to be for 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 mm. their English guys, yo. <laughs> For there, for them, ah, for there to be division in a place, yes, there just has to be someone who's sidetracking or someone that's uh, believing in a different vision. Yes. So just having a team that walks in your shoes, understands what you're going through, understands what your you're vision, building. and carries that vision, mm. then you know you're going to be successful as a salon. Definitely. Mm. Yeah, for sure. I even feel like as someone who has done my hair before, there are often times where I've gone to someone, had the best time, gone to the same establishment and they hand me over to someone. So and nice. I say, Debbie, I'm that girl. Like, if yeah. I come to you and I start with you, I want you. Yes. But obviously, as people grow, we have to understand that, okay, you won't be able to always do my hair. So, you are passing you on to someone else and not having the best experience, I think, also reflects on you guys, yes. which obviously isn't fair because you've been able to um, really work on your craft and to be able to be really good at what you do. So, it's important that the people who are carrying your brand who are representing your salute are, are able to do what you guys are able to do definitely yeah so how have you both been able to grow your individual brands helping women find their hairstyle sure um i'm gonna go back to when we started mm. back in 2016 yes one of the questions that i used to get a lot was what makes you different from the other salon yes um be it, we were amongst the first natural hair salons to open in Joburg. Yes. Which then gave us the title of being the. one of the top three natural hair salons in South Africa. Oh, okay. So we were given the status by Glamour Magazine. Yes. But yeah, going back to then, um, there was a lot of shift that had to happen in me individually first. Mm -hmm. Having the will to say, no, I can't treat your relaxed hair. I only work with natural hair was one of the biggest things that I had to adjust to. I can imagine. Because if you walk in and I say, oh, hey, no, we don't do this. We do that. And you say, 
But I'm here. Why don't you do it? The will to say, oh no, we can't really mm. do it. One, two. Um, the moment we started being bold about what we did, women started trusting in us that actually we've been looking for a space that could mm. cater for our offers, yes. not having to manipulate it or change it, but to do it in a state that it's at. Mm -hmm. Um, I've had clients walking in. We do their hair. They walk out, they cry like, Sma, I never thought I could rock this type of hairstyle. Mm. Or I never thought my hair could do this. Um, also, when we started, we still we were still under the influence that black hair is not professional. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of undressing that I had to do with my customers. Mm -hmm. you now, some would walk in and be like, I really want to do that hairstyle, but I don't think it's for me. Mm. I'm like, let's try it and see. Mm. Because they've been told before. But mm. actually, it's straight back as a And I'm like, let's try it. Let's see if it works. Because most of them, it's what they were taught. Yes. Um, it's not what they experienced. It's not, I did the pondo and it didn't look nice. It's, no, I was told to I not. shouldn't. Yeah. So yeah. therefore. Mm. So from then, I realized that actually, I'm going to put borders around this. I'm going to stand firm. I'm going to be a natural hairstylist throughout. Yes. Whoever walks in here will have to understand that this is what we cater for. Mm -hmm. And then from there, it grew. You mm -hmm. know, the clientele grew. The community grew. I um, started getting interviews. Smart. So tell us, why black hair? Smart. So give us tips on how to take care of black hair. Mm -hmm. Smart. There's an event. We want you to be part of it. I remember there was one event that I went to. And I was the only natural hairstylist on stage styling amongst relaxers. Yes. And I remember Zizo Beda was the MC. And she came to me, she said, girl, aren't you afraid that mm. you're the only... The only one. One. Yes. This is styling locks. Yes. And I said, do you know who they're going to remember when they speak about this competition? Exactly. You. Smart. Because she stood out. Mm. They're not going to remember. Oh, they're like, oh, the one, with the, the one that was styling relaxers. No, they're going to remember specifically Smart who yes. was styling locks on stage. Yes. That's when I decided that I'm going to build this community, this home for my Afro and lock ladies. Mm -hmm. And it has been booming Amazing. since yes. then. It has been growing since then. Women walk tall. Be like, Smart, you taught me how to take care of my locks. Mm. Smart, you taught me how to take care of my natural hair. So that's that's one of the biggest part in my journey. Yeah. Which I've helped women identify yes. exactly who they wanted to be, yes. not who the world wanted and them to be. And you've given them room to do so. Room to do so. And you've encouraged it. Like, oh, you don't want to do a pondo. Why? Yes. <laughs> Like, why not? Let, let's do it. Mm, you know, mm. let's do it. I've, I've, I'm, I'm glad. I'm proud that I've created that platform for women to even come back and say, "Ma, I saw this. Do you think we can?" You know that level of trust. Would hundred percent. Ma said I must wear plastic. I'm going to wear it uh, yes. because Ma said I must wear it, <laughs> yes, and it's okay. Yes. They will tell you. They will, even on social media. They'll tell. Ma, I saw her style. Ne? Do you think mm. thing I work out? Yeah. You know, and I've given that platform to, to be open also, to be trusting. Good yes. Guys, you can trust me with anything. For sure. When it comes to your hair. That's lovely. And you, Debbie? I think being authentic has played a huge role in the growth of my brand. Mm. Um, when you look at the meaning of growth, it just means you've moved from where you were to where you are, you know. And for you to be able to do that, you have to accept change. Mm. Um, so just with like the the business and how we've grown there's been a lot of changes and a lot of stuff that has happened along the way um as a woman myself personally the styles that i've rocked i mean i rocked Nicki minaj and then i rocked <laughs> <laughs> something else you know yes but i think it's important to explore the different stages of your life and um you know what type of styles work for you in the different stages of your life mm -hmm. so i think with Ryan, uh, what we've uh, what we've done is we've tried to We've done the research for you, yes. right? So that you don't have to do it yourself, which okay. is why I feel like a lot of some people are like, oh, you left science to do hair. I feel like there's a science to hair, yes. you know? Oh. And hair's not, it's it, uh, black hair back then, it was just like whatever, but there's literally a science to it. Mm. There's um, a lot of debunking and yes. demything that we need to do. You know, I remember and when we started, you. clients will be like, yeah, ever since I've had this, this, this afro, because we also do afro, right? Mm. So be like, ever since I've had this afro, it's so dry. What do you do? I spray water and I put oil. Water and oil don't mix, right? Yeah, for sure. So you put water and there's a lot of water and it's dripping. You put oil, the oil is just on top of the mm. water. It's just coating the top of the water. Mm. And during the day, every both of them drip. Mm. Nothing mm. has actually penetrated your hair. So, you know, just understanding science and understanding like, babe, like... What, what what was the thought process behind it? And mm. I, I always look, even with my stylist, when you do something, what was the thought process? When you were busy putting the curls before you put that, like, 
tell me what was your reasoning mm. um, because once we understand that you know hair is not just something else just the For way sure. we think about our skin and we think about everything else it needs to be the same um, with our hair mm. but also at the same time you know um with change and with growth it has been very important to communicate to the client that enjoy your hair like yes. hair's like grass this is my saying clients hate it like yeah your hair's like grass hair's like grass if you chop it it's gonna grow yeah you know so enjoy your hair enjoy the different stages of your life we're not always going one life is not unidimensional right mm-hmm. so we're not always gonna be where we are right now there's gonna be a stage in your time in your life when you've got a lot more time to style your hair and try sometimes life is crazy and you mm. just need to do orange hair like smile <laughs> <laughs> At one point, there was orange, blue, purple, pink in one head. Yes. One point. Yeah, because life can get crazy and allow mm. it, you know, allow yourself, allow it, your hair to be a part of you mm. and not just to be something, oh, I need to keep mm-hmm. it away or whatever. Let it be a part of you. Enjoy. When life gets crazy, be crazy. When you have a lot more responsibilities, you know, do a less maintenance styles that yes. will allow you. But as long as you don't forget that, you know, you need to take care of your hair, you yes. need to take care of the, the health of your hair. Mm-hmm. But explore, guys. Chop your hair. If, you're, if, you're, <laughs> if you go through that break, that break up and it cooks you, just, do it. Just cut your do hair. It. Yeah. <laughs> it will grow back. You know, it's, sure. it's not the end. So just to cut everything short, you know, I, I, I truly believe that, you know, being authentic to yourself will allow you you know to style your hair in the best way possible to tell your story yes. you know because at, ev- at different stages of our lives we've got a different story to tell mm. and let your hair tell that story mm. you know let your hair say that yo I'm in my baddie era yeah. right or now. I'm in my mommy era yes. or hot mom or you know your corporate mm. is eating me like yes. guys <laughs> can yes. I just do these braids yeah, yeah. I think that's the beauty about black hair, being able to just be so diverse so and be a different babe every single day. Both of you touched on it just a little bit, but I wanted to ask for some advice on the importance of hair health and any styling hacks you guys have for everyday use. Guys. Maybe let's do one natural hair. You know, maybe smile, you can give us a natural hair and Debbie, give us something for the bust down to make sure that it's <laughs> sleek, it's busting. you know, and good. Uh, in terms of hair health, guys, um... So, those past two weeks, I've been doing research on scalp and hair conditions. Okay. And the research or the information that I found, some mm. of it was shocking. Mm-hmm. You know, it was so shocking that um, we don't have really morph stylists out there who actually go and research yes. and give back the information to the stylist. I met up with a dermatologist. And one of the questions she asked me was, why do you do it? Smile, mm. you've been doing this since you've opened your salon. Mm. You come, you meet up with us, you ask us questions, you take it back to your customers. And I told her, it is so important for me to be well equipped. Yes. Well equipped about hair conditions, about scalp conditions. Debs touched on science behind hair. Yes. Me understanding what goes in and out of the products before I deliver it to my customers. Mm. Now, what I want to say is that, guys, what you do to your hair today expect the result 10 years from today crazy what you did to your hair 10 years before crazy it's probably what you're going through right now yeah because most of the time we want to pay attention to our hair when we start losing it yeah what can you use and i'm like what have you been doing to your hair yeah. now the the, the, cri- the critical part about usma mm. when you decide to sit on my chair yes expect to usu say jail okay google are you on chronic medication google um. are you on uh, what's going through what's what's your diet yes uh, what what's what's your gym routine you know yes. what's your hair routine because at the end of the day a quick result mm. i want to walk in Debs, I want my hairline tomorrow. Yo. What do you have? Yeah. And I'm like, no, babes, let's go back. Mm. What happened 10 years ago? Mm. And probably 10 years ago, you were in your beddies. You were chopping and <laughs> hopping and coloring and doing <laughs> yes. whatever. And it's what's happening to your hair currently. Yes. There's this say that says, hair, it's just hair. It will grow back. Mm. And I mean, I'd like to differ. Mm-hmm. Sometimes your hair would pack its bags and, and leave say, I'm not and go to Thailand <laughs> and chill there and be like, we're not coming back. We're not coming back, my and sister. And like I said, it's yeah. when you start losing your hair that you start paying attention. Yes. And some of us, we are product junkies. <laughs> Let's stop being product junkies. As well. Yeah. Look, what do you use for your hair? It looks nice. Look, you see Debs the following day. Debs, what do you use, What do you use? I use... <laughs> Something else. You go buy it. Yes. You know, and then there's these trends. The the 
rice waters, the vinegars, mm, yes. the onion hey. water. Mm. There was someone that used onion water for their hairline. Mm. There's someone that YouTube. used fix <laughs> for their hairline. <laughs> and I'm like, how sure are you that you can withstand the menthol? Yes. 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 Wouldn't your face react towards, you know? Mm. So my hair health tip is one, take care of your hair. Mm. Like I said, what you do to it today, it's what's going to happen tomorrow. Mm. Find a proper hairstylist. I know we've been crippled by COVID and our financials are not looking properly. Yeah. So sometimes we find ourselves going to Abu Jamani, yeah. <laughs> because <laughs> save my cent. Yeah. But find a proper stylist that will definitely consult and tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. Three is stop hopping on and hopping off products. Yes. Find a product that works for you. Mm -hmm. Four is stop manipulation. Yeah. Facelift mm. instantaneously. Yes. Stop doing that mm. because your edges are screaming, Yo. go. Okay. Your edges are screaming. And also just when you find the proper stylist, they'll definitely tell you on the hairstyles yes. that are suitable for your hair type, your hairline, the length of your hair, mm -hmm. the type of hair that you have. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So what I'm hearing is that there isn't a quick fix. Yeah. You have to understand your what hair. What you do today... 10 years time, Baba. So Expect be sure, the girls. results. Be sure. Okay, when you choose your hairstyles. <laughs> and then uh, hairstyle tips or hairstyle tricks that you can try on an everyday. Mm. Um, so this is for me, Isma. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I hardly wear my afro okay. because I just feel like it overwhelms me. Okay. So I'm asking you now, what is a daily tip or a hair care trick I can use for my hair just to make sure that it looks healthy at the very least? Um, I love that we are now... Practical on social media. Mm -hmm. Like now we have everyone posting ideas on hairstyles. Mm -hmm. Now we have people posting on how to, you mm -hmm. know. Um, when you decide to be practical about everything or be creative, make sure your hair is hydrated. Make sure your hair is moisturized. Okay. That's the number one tool. Yes. If it, whatever, whether you want to stretch it out, you want to put on heat, you want mm. to just make sure it's hydrated, it's moisturized, it's protected. Okay. Um, and there's a lot of hairstyles that you can do. There's high puffs, there's low puffs. There's, that's why I'm saying with, currently on our social media, we have a lot of people sharing uh, different types of hairstyles. Mm. But Mina, you know, what I can say is whatever you decide to do, I'm not yes. giving you limits. Yes. Just make sure it's protected, it's hydrated, it's moisturized. Perfect. Prote yes. Protection, hydration, Shin and moisture. Moisturized. moisturized okay that's simple enough i'm sure yes. i can do that <laughs> <laughs> and debbie do you have a bit of in um a tip for us when it comes to hair health as well as a styling hack for your wigs me for yeah. wigs <clears throat> for bust out for oh, bust bust down. <laughs> <laughs> so i think a lot of the times um when people buy hair they're like oh i bought this raw hair it's ten thousand rands yeah and the, the expectations of the hair are a bit Crazy. Yeah, it's yeah. to behave like Good. a 10,000. Yeah. yeah. I mustn't wash it. I mustn't brush it. Yeah. I mustn't do anything. I must take it off. I must put it on yeah. every day. It must put itself on and yes. it must take itself off. Yes. And you know, that's not how it works with hair. Mm. Um, you, you'll find like a lot of the times with curly units, a person will be like, oh, my hair's tangling. When last did you wash it? Uh, a month ago. Come on, babs. Why did you wash your wig a month ago? Like, mm -hmm. no. So, mm. you know, it's quite important to treat raw hair like real hair. If you're really struggling, go ask your Indian friends. They will tell you, yo, this hair, I have to always detangle. Yes. Yes. Now, when you are just like, oh, I've got this, this 32 inch, why must I brush it? Yeah. It's 10K, dubs. It's it hair. must behave like brush a 10K. <laughs> Yeah. You can't brush itself. Yeah. So I think the pri my main thing with wigs is keep your wigs clean. Mm. A clean wig is the best wig. You know, when you want straight hair and you really want, see what you've got next to you there. Mm -hmm. Those, These babies hair, over here. Our, then you're fine. You know okay. what I'm saying? But just make sure that you've nourished your hair, especially mm. this hair. It's no longer getting nutrients for your, from your scalp, right? So you need to nourish it. Make sure that your conditioner is right. You're doing treatments on it. You don't only do treatments on your natural hair. Mm. You do treatments on your wig you yes. take care of it you brush it storage a person will take off their their wigs oh, and then put it in a bag why are you being right? personal as she oily. is literally coming for me <laughs> why are you being of you guys, as oily as it is yes as dirty as it is you put it yes. in a plastic bag for like two months and then <laughs> two months later you want to wear it imagine that 
that dirt just working on your hair, then it has split ends. It's not going to be store clean wigs. You I know what I'm it. saying? Like mm. take care of your, you've spent so much money. Like at least if you don't care about the hair, care about the money that you spend. Because yeah. I don't For mind sure. you're going to come and buy more. Do you know right? what I actually think? I think the more we spend on hair, the more we want for it to not behave like hair. Yes. Yeah. So it's like I pay 10K. I don't want to have to maintain this thing because yes. I pay so much. But you're right. Hair yeah. is hair at the end of the day. And the more you spend, the more it behaves like hair. Right? Mm. So you know like the cheaper hairs where China would have done something cool. Yes. Raw hair acts <laughs> like <laughs> hair. Like raw hair is hair. Okay. The curls are curls. You go to humidity, it's going to act like mm. you are in humidity. Mm. And you cannot expect it to act different to like do you want raw hair or not? Yeah. Like let's just be there. You yeah. either want plastics that just don't react to Any weather anything. and all that, or you actually want proper raw hair. Yes. Raw hair. Um and a styling tip. Mm. So I'm gonna give you two, right? Yes. Because with with our hair, you're either wearing it curly or you're or wearing straight. it straight. So mm. straight, like I said, guys, keep your hair clean. Mm. Right? Keep your hair clean. Make sure you straighten it with good quality tools. I think a lot of the time we neglect that the tools need to be right. Yes. But also take it to the salon. You know, people don't want to take their wigs to the salon because mm-hmm. I've already spent my... T- oh, guys, 10K is a 10K. problem. 10K is killing us. <laughs> I've already spent 10,000 rands. I'm going to wash it at home, mm. you know? Take it to the salon. So with your curls, a lot of people struggle to have their curls lost. Like People are always like, my curls dropped. Um, but it's very important when you do curl your hair. Mm-hmm. When the direction of curl, how you hold the curl. Oh, guys, there's, there's so much technicality. <laughs> it's it's science. Science. <laughs> that, But it's very important to actually... Your curl doesn't hold when you put it around the wand. It holds when it cools off. So when you let it cool off hanging, it's, oh, it, it already, it's already dropped. Yes. Yeah. So you need to make sure you've pinned it oh, up. Also, that's why they pin it up yes. after. Oh. So that it cools off in that position because that's the, Crazy. it's holding the curl. Yes. It doesn't hold the curls when you, that's just you applying the heat and now uh. it needs to cool off in, in the position that it's in. Yes. Yeah, right? Mm. So with your curls, always make your, allow your curl to cool off in place. Once it's completely cool, then you let it go. Okay. And always use um a holding spray. Yes. Um on your hair. If you don't have a holding spray, you don't you str- you battle because sometimes people battle with how much they put. They put too much. The hair's a bit crunchy. You can use mm-hmm. like a mousse. Mm-hmm. Um, if you use a mousse on your head, it gives you a little bit of volume, but then it also helps your hold, hold, your, hold your curls. Yeah. Yes. Um, and then when we look at straight hair, you know, for your sh- for straight hair to be bussing because you, yes. you want your hair <laughs> to be straight um for it to be bussing the main thing keep your hair clean guys i cannot emphasize that keep your wigs and your hair clean mm. keep it clean use a good oil use heat defense mm-hmm. um but also don't neglect going to a professional it's very important to go to a professional salon um because as much as you know, you've been equipped and empowered with products and knowledge at home. And, you know, there's so much knowledge on YouTube. There's mm-hmm. knowledge on Instagram and mm-hmm. everyone is showing you how to, how to, how to, you know. Um, but that does not equate to the, you know, the 10,000 hours. I don't know if you guys read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Yeah. It's like, you have the 10,000, we have yes. the 10,000 hours with hair. Mm-hmm. We've dealt with hair that was mm-hmm. just misbehaving like a toddler. You know, we know <laughs> yeah, how to you work know with it. that. Yeah. Whereas with you at home, yes, you, you're equipped with the, with the right product and you, you have the product that we also use, you know. Um, but, you know, you don't have those 10,000 hours. So it's very For important sure. to actually go to a professional to take care of your hair. Now mm-hmm. and then when you can, I know like, budgets are tight Mm. 10,000 rands you've spent it and I don't have more yeah but you know take care of your 10,000 rands yeah for sure (laughs) that's the least you can do especially in this economy okay guys my final question to you guys which I'm a bit sad about because I'm learning so (laughs) much but I want to know um, what do you guys know now that you'd love to be able to tell your younger self when starting out in the industry the sky is the limit Mm. I, I think when I started, I thought, you know, I'm going to be a hairstylist and that's that. Mm. Until one day they said, oh, hey, you need to host an event. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, hey, you need to go host a master class. And there's like 2.5 people attending. Mm. I thought it was just a hairstylist. So do not limit yourself. Mm-hmm. One, two, there's a lot of information out there. Mm. Make sure you go after it. I was fortunate enough to be approached by Tresemme to say, we would like you to come assist us in formulating a hair training mm. for our people. Mm. You know, there's a lot out there. Mm. Just make sure you 
you follow the right information, you know, because there's also uh, information that's not right out For there. Sure. But just make sure that you you read, you research, you don't limit yourself, you go after your dreams, mm -hmm. you you take yourself somewhere. Mm -hmm. Because I've always said that um, passion will take you where finances couldn't take you. Mm. That's what happened with me. <clears throat> I didn't have funds to go study further, mm. but look where my passion That's took taken me. taken you, yes, yes, yes. And you, Debbie? When I was younger, um, like when I started this business, I think, Smug, you can probably relate. It's a very lonely industry. It is. You know, no one wants to engage with you. No one wants to tell you anything. Facts. No one wants to educate you. No one wants to give you a tip. <laughs> yeah. You'll be like, oh, I saw you use the oil. And they're just like, what oil? Mm. I don't know. I, I, I don't yes. remember what it looked like. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, and you, we really had to learn via trial and error. On you know, own. like on your own, you have to get it wrong to get it right, you mm. know. So I'd really tell young me because I was really hard on myself. Every time you get it wrong, you're just like, oh, how could you do this? How could you do that? You know? But it's just like, don't be scared to fail. <laughs> don't be scared to get it wrong. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, you'll get it wrong as long as you've learned from getting it wrong. Or maybe if you tried something and you didn't get it right and you failed, which I don't think it's failure because you've learned, right? You've learned something, yes. yeah. Um, so as long as you are learning and you are improving and never stop learning, let's like... <laughs> Don't Never. stop learning. Like you said, our industry. Bonding. Remember when it started, there was weaves and it Yo, was like human There was hand. a Yankee. There was mm, a human a hand. Remember being. doing your bonding. You were, you were just lucky if you could straighten that hair. Yes. yes. Then now we got raw hair. Then we got closures. Now there's grades. Now there's frontal. Now they're mm, grades. grades. Yes. Mm. And then you have your HD frontal. Mm. This, this front. Like it's constant learning. So if mm. I stuck to saying, no, I do weaving. I'm still going to be in 2000 yes. and what, what was it? 2012, 2013. Mm. It's going to be stuck there. Mm. You know, and I know next year, you know, there's going to be something new with hair. For sure. You know, there's going to be a new trend. Mm. Even yes. with styles, that's, I, 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 I was smiling stuff. Like when you do certain styles or, or braid styles, it would be Fulani braids that are trending. But then now the curls. Yo, everything. everyone wants the curls. Then yes. it's the goddess curls. Then it's the knotless braiding. And if you're just stuck to saying, you know, this is how I braid, like you just don't grow you and you just don't evolve. You on a lot. Mm. Definitely. Yeah. So I'll, I'll really tell young Debra, you know what, Ne? Try. Don't be scared to try. Like, mm -hmm. I think the fear of trying is just what cripples us. Don't be scared mm -hmm. to try. But also, most importantly keep educating yourself like mm -hmm. don't ever feel like you've arrived anywhere mm -hmm. you know because i think in life or in any journey destination is the end of it mm -hmm. right so if i feel like i've arrived that's the end of me and my journey as that's a stylist or as a salon yeah. owner but as long as i continue to learn as long as i continue to breathe in my in, in my business mm -hmm. the life carries on you know mm -hmm. and you know it's, it just becomes more and more beautiful as you go along and i don't i, I can't wait to see what else is what there. else is <laughs> next yeah. yes guys thank you so much for your time Time. I, for one, have learned a lot. And also just hearing you guys speak is so nice. Like it's, you can tell this is something you're very passionate about. It's something that you enjoy. And I wish you guys all the best, you know. Thank you. And more than anything, I hope that all the girlies that are listening, actually, everybody who's listening is not even about the girlies. <laughs> when it comes to hair, hopefully you were able to take a little styling tip here. I know I have. But please make sure to support these lovely ladies and come visit them in their respective hair salons. But that is us. I uh, hope you guys enjoy this episode. See you guys next time. <laughs>